My name is Dustin Betts. Uh, welcome to this Founder Institute live stream. I'm joined today by Carlo Scaglia. He is the founder of Exordi, an FI London portfolio company. Exordi is the platform for authentic content creators um, for real brands made by real people. Carlo, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Dustin. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, so before we dive into your company, Exordi, could you please tell us first just a little bit about yourself and your own startup story? You know, what were the experiences of yours, professional, personal experiences that led you to founding this um, creator-driven content platform? Sure. So um, I think my story is pretty short, mainly just because I'm, um, I'm 23 years old. So I graduated uni last year and I worked in consulting for a while. Essentially there, I discovered a couple of things, one that Consulting wasn't quite my my knack, I guess, wasn't was really my passion. And then it also led me to find the the problem that Exordi goes to goes to address. Why startups? In all fairness, I'm I'm not too sure. I've always enjoyed something that is exciting, new challenges and building things from scratch. It just made sense identifying a, a problem and just slowly started diving into it, diving into it some more, and just ended up here with Exordi. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So the next question I want to ask you just to kind of frame the conversation is I know a little bit about Exordi because you're a Founder Institute portfolio company. Uh, that's a platform for bringing together brands and content creators. But um, just please give us your short pitch as the founder for those who have never heard of Exordi before. Uh, what is it? So Exordi tackles the really inefficient process that communication companies like marketing PR, media agencies have to face when they need to create um, campaigns for all of their different clients, especially sourcing pictures and videos because they have multiple clients spread throughout the world with different needs that need to target different audiences, different trends, et cetera, et cetera. We essentially connect them with people that already make content for fun, you know, through GoPros, drones, cameras, even modern phones, and have access to key locations and especially are very knowledgeable about their sectors. So by doing this, we're able to drastically bypass production time and costs while also delivering far more relevant content made by Gen Zs for a Gen Z audience. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and I want to kind of talk about uh, different sides of that. So, you know, the Exordi platform, it sort of functions as like a two-side marketplace. And I want to talk about each of those sides in turn. So the creators and the brands, I guess, first the brands, um, yeah, you kind of mentioned this briefly, but what are the biggest challenges um, that the types of brands you work with are experiencing um, when it comes to their, their content creation? So you kind of mentioned about you know, locations and um, yeah, do you want to just uh, recap that briefly? And then the follow up question is, you know, what are the challenges uh, similarly that are you know, faced uh, by content creators or people who want to become um, content creators affiliated with brands? So the two main aspects are time and relevance. There's also the cost aspect, but cost is, you know, if the content's good, these companies are willing to pay a high amount. So as I said, it's, it's timing and relevance because by the time a production team is sent halfway across the globe, shoots the content, waits for the right weather, et cetera, et cetera, about two weeks at least have passed. And this whole getting them back, editing that content, providing on the right channels. And before you know it, a month has gone by before that content is shown anywhere. Secondly, there's the relevance aspect. We're in a world where it's not so much more sector specific anymore. And there's a lot of cross pollination between cultures, trends, sports, music, art, fashion. And so sending even the best professional team to film something that is out of their experience will result in content that fails to relate to that specific audience every time. Meaning that while it could be cinematically incredibly good, it won't have much engagement. And that's one of the key issues that companies face when it comes to the whole content creation side. For yeah. Sorry, please. Oh, yeah. No, I was going to ask you what you were just about to say. Yeah. And so how about on the on the creator side? What are some of their challenges? So we, Exordi doesn't quite work with the whole sort of influencer world. Um, so maybe our creators don't have the, the big challenges of people wanting to become influencers. Exordi works with what we sort of called um, rebels. In other words, people that just make content as a way to relive memories and experience certain emotions maybe during <laughs> during gloomy days when they can't be outside living out their their passions mm -hmm. and so th there's still some issues that these people face which is 
comes to the idea of relatability in the sense that what they might find on other social platforms is not exactly what intrigues them. So we bring them all together over like-minded ideas and stuff that drives them over a community that shares the same values and where their content is able to be appreciated by the same kind of people. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it kind of gets to the, the next question that I wanted to ask, which you actually explained really succinctly uh, at the beginning, telling us what Exordi was. But so bringing, you know, these two sides together, why, why Exordi? Tell us just a little bit about that relationship. I guess that happens when you're bringing together the content hungry brands and these kind of authentic creators in different places around the world and how that works to, um, you know, provide the solution that I guess the brands are looking for as well, as well as the creators. Yeah. So these companies, for example, let's take a marketing company that will have multiple campaigns under their belt to carry out within a bunch of months. And they'll need a whole lot of different content very quickly and efficiently that's specifically suited to those briefs. Mm -hmm. So when they come to Exordi, we have our own standardized briefs that allows them to put the key elements of the, um, the content required to produce, You know, whether it's a video or photo, where's it going to go? Is it Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn? Is it their website? Perhaps even a billboard. Mm -hmm. We have a set of information that then we correlate to tags. These same tags are also applied to creators, meaning that by the time a brief is not even completed, we've already shortlisted the key creators that can um, complete this brief. As soon as the brief is finished, uh, the creators are sent a notification saying, hey guys, there's this that can be suitable for you. You can make some money off it. And the cool part that the, is that the creators don't even need to change their habits. You know, They're already doing this content for fun. So essentially, it's getting a little ping within a couple of hours they finish the content and then the companies can choose if they want either just the raw stuff that they edit, the full video edit. Maybe they just need the creators to sort of perform a little action shot. And so we bridge together the speed through the tag based system, but also the flexibility by the different competencies of these creators. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I liked how you emphasize sort of the location shoot because, I mean, I haven't done any, you know, exotic uh, filming, you know, travel stuff before, but it makes a lot of sense that, like you said, the, 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 lo like leveraging the location of creators who are already, you know, experts in that locality or, or because it costs so much money to fly people out. And like you said, stick yeah. to a schedule. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you next about the key features, and you sort of touched on this, um, that, you know, Exordi creators can interpret the brand sort of brief, and it's, like you said, it's uh, you, your platform will match, basically, the brief or the, the, the creator who uh, would probably fit that brief um, most, and that they can, you know, do different types of content, like videos or photos to fulfill the, the brief. But um, are there other kind of key features of using the platform that we haven't talked about on either the brand side or the creator side that you... Um, want to highlight here or um, or if we've kind of already talked about them like if I'm brand new and say I'm say I'm on the creator side and I want to get started um, using Exordi what does that process look like for um, for me if I was living in a more interesting place than I do personally <laughs> okay so if if you're a creator the moment that you're onboarded well, we get a notification of the team and we tend to reach out to you personally and just bring you onto our discord community the cool part about that is that you see all of the different other types of creators and that's where we share tips, ideas, share our content, see what's being worked on. Uh, maybe the professional filmmakers will reach out to the amateur one saying, hey guys, I'll go shoot some, some videos for fun. So that's on the creator aspect. In terms of functionalities, you know, right now it's pretty, it's pretty young. It's just an MVP. So we're not yet boosting in some massive algorithms and, and whatnot. Definitely as our database of creators goes, we'll be able to improve our matching algorithm and also the machine learning aspects to continuously pair the briefs with the creators. One thing we are eyeing, but that is definitely for the future, perhaps in near future, is going down towards the NFT route, though on a more democratized level, as in attributing them only as certificates rather than super high value <laughs> digital tokens. Uh -huh. Yeah, super interesting. That uh, definitely seems to be a relevant tie-in. I mean, so many brands are launching NFTs now. We'll see how much sticking power it has. But yeah, that's uh, that's definitely interesting. It makes sense to me. Uh, I want to ask you to kind of walk out on a limb for this next question, which is to, to make a prediction. 
Okay. How do you foresee, I mean, obviously this has been a trend that's been taking shape um, with the kind of micro influencer economy over the last couple of years. I know you don't use that term, but so how do you see this kind of brand creator driven economy changing most over the next, uh, you know, five to 10 years? That's a that's a cool question. The the part that I see is that quality is now available to everyone, as in no one will win on creating good content. You know, iPhone 13s are pretty much professional photo cameras that agencies had to use a couple of years ago. So no one will be able to win on just creating good content. People will be able to win on creating unique and highly relevant content. Mm -hmm. And that is done, in my belief, through, through passions and through really understanding the world that you're in. There are certain platforms out there that allow for, for pretty quick videos that can be used as advertising, as in you might need to promote, I don't know, a, a razor or something. But when it comes to something a bit deeper that really needs to connect with your consumers, you really need to leverage a whole set of creators that truly understand the dynamics, the cultures, the trends of those different industries. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your content you're going to get will fail completely to relate to that audience and they'll just scroll by, especially with the amount of, you know, information and content that everyone is bombarded with on a daily basis. You cannot simply provide just another good quality picture. Yeah, yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense with regard to yeah the iPhone cameras. You know, that's not the key differentiator. It's definitely that more uh, just super targeted matching and you know meeting people where they're at and um, yeah having uh, demographics that like relate to each of the uh, brands target demographics. If there's different ones working with different creators, um, yeah, cool. That definitely that that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you've obviously done a lot to, to push Exerty forward in your current MVP. Uh, what is one of the biggest challenges that you've faced uh, and overcome uh, so far? And you know, what was it that made the difference in overcoming some of the early startup challenges? <laughs> That's not a good question because there's a whole lot of them pretty much. Yeah. But, um, I think there's two key challenges. The first one was the tech aspect. None of us have um, tech competencies. And so on this side, an old uni friend of mine, uh, Athena Weber, that set up her own sort of marketing and development company called 12 Ahead. She really helped me out setting up the MVP using Webflow, the no-code local platform, which mm -hmm. is incredibly powerful and I think is probably the go-to way for anyone that's setting up an MVP because it allows you to be, well, to push out something quickly, cheaply, and just get it tested immediately without too much hassle, you know? Yeah. Now, the, the other side is that we're focused on the creator economy and it's something that in Europe has not really seen so much. Um, they're focused more on like fintech or health tech or, you know, SaaS companies rather than the whole creator economy side. Mm -hmm. And that was speaking with a, with a friend of mine, Harry, that set up a company called Fanfix and um, essentially a clean version of OnlyFans. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. And he's based in LA and it said that that whole environment is completely different over there. And so, you know, I think that's one of the challenges that, that we're facing right now as well. Yeah, this whole creator economy, as you kind of mentioned, like the the early NFT, I mean, it's definitely still in the early days, it feels like to me. So, uh, yeah, interesting that uh, the bastion is more on the uh, U.S. West Coast right now, you feel, and kind of uh, earlier, uh, early leading edge uh, in Europe. So uh, that's good. It's a good place to be for, for being that platform. Um, the last question that I, uh, I have for you here is you just, where is Exordi headed next? Are there any, you know, uh, news or final updates to share with the Founder Institute community or any asks, um, for the audience, for those who might be watching live or watch this video, uh, after we're done. In terms of where Exordi is headed right now, uh, also because of the Christmas period, there are not many clients engaged. We're just building up our community of creators, um, pretty intensely. And the thing that we like is that. We're, we're pretty focused on on not making just another cold online presence, and we actually bring it to life through offline things. Like on the twenty third, there's a there's a bunch of our creators meeting for dinner in the Alps. Then some others are scheduling like video creations together. So right now, in this specific like coming weeks, we're focused completely on our community development. Uh, after the holiday period, we'll go back to our client side, and we're targeting more the B two B structure. So marketing agencies, PR, media companies, rather than just brands. 
And um, I think we're we're gonna start trying to get a foothold in in the US as well because that's just a much hotter place for us right now. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, you're doing some community building over the holidays. It sounds really interesting, even the off or the online stuff that you were doing. In addition, when you mentioned the Discord community, I didn't know about that. So it sounds like your creators have some cool ways to connect, and some will be connecting in person. So um, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. This has been you know really interesting for me. Uh, you know, I do some digital content creation, I guess, but just learning about some of these dynamics happening behind the scenes and the creator-driven and branded content economy that yeah i think it's definitely still in the early days of of its emergence so yeah we're all really looking forward to keeping up with exordi and where you're headed next uh carlos Gaglia, thanks so much for joining us today thank you very much have a great day